Hey, my name is Lilike. Studies have shown that for most of us, it's pretty safe to say that we find note-taking and just reading the syllabus to be the most intuitively efficient methods of learning. But unfortunately, studies have also shown that those are just the worst studying methods that you could be using. Maybe, maybe you're struggling in school and that's why you clicked on this video. Or maybe you saw it and you were like, a more efficient studying method? How dare thee, I am a god. Whether you're not so keen on the grades you're getting or whether you're achieving marks that aren't necessarily anything to be ashamed of, if you're using any other study techniques that aren't active recall, you just aren't achieving the peak efficiency when it comes to your learning. Look, I know humans are creatures of habit and we kind of tend to resist change, but even if you're one of those people that are doing you know, quite well for yourself, wherever you're finding yourself academically speaking, allow me to try convince you. I have science to back me up on this. Okay, so let's start with a scientific example. Back in 2013, a team of psychologists went about analyzing the data that was collected in previous studies that were done on the different styles and methods of learning and their efficacy. They took some of the most popular studying methods among students and went about determining their relative utility. At the end of the study, this is what they had to say. Five techniques received a low utility assessment. Summarization, highlighting, the keyword mnemonic, imagery used for text learning and rereading. These techniques were rated as low utility for numerous reasons. Now, these reasons included just how much training was required to be able to implement the studying techniques and therefore how applicable these techniques were on a broad spectrum of students studying their respective subjects. The funny thing is that if you went up to any student right now and you asked them what their preferred studying method was or is, their reply would probably fall into one of these five categories. And that's because intuitively humans just feel like they're being productive when they're reading something and taking notes on it. When, as the study would suggest, that's really just not the case. So having discovered that the studying technique that you are most likely using isn't necessarily the best, uh, let's read further on what the study found. On the basis of the evidence, we rate practice testing as having high utility. Testing effects have been demonstrated across an impressive range of practice test formats. Thus, practice testing has broad applicability. Okay, so right about now feels like a good time to give you a general definition of what active recall is. If you search up active recall just in Google search box, the first thing that comes up is this. Active recall is a principle of efficient learning which claims the need to actively simulate memory during the learning process. Active recall involves recalling the information that you're learning as you're learning it, effectively testing yourself at every stage of the revision process. Because of this, active recall is one of the best studying methods to use to implement testing into your studying process which is what this study found to be the highest utility when it comes to the different studying techniques that they were doing research on. So what does utilizing active recall actually look like? Well, I have my AS physics book uh, right here and I'm just gonna open it on something, I don't know, like uh, waves, why not? Oh, I just opened it on waves, wow. What a coincidence. Okay, so let's say you're learning about transverse waves and you want to remember all of the different aspects of a wave. So you'd go and read, for example, uh, the distance of a point on the wave from its undeserved position or equilibrium position is called the displacement x. Right, so then you'd either just close your eyes or put away your book and you tell yourself, okay, what did I just read? So the distance of a point on a wave from its equilibrium point or its state of rest is called its displacement and that is denoted by x. Okay, makes sense, right? So now you've got that in your brain. Then you move on. And you'd say, okay, the next point. The maximum displacement of any point on the wave from its underserved position is called the amplitude which is denoted by a capital letter A, right? The amplitude of a wave on the sea is measured in units of distance 
e.g. meters, that's kind of useless information. The greater amplitude of the wave, the louder the sound or rougher the C. Okay, so that is useful. So, okay, what, what, did, what did they just talk about? They were saying the amplitude of a wave is the maximum displacement. We just define displacement, right? So the highest displacement that a wave has along its path is then called its amplitude, which is denoted by A. And the higher the amplitude, the louder the sound, right? Okay, so you want to try and visualize this as you go. And th that's what you do the entire way. You just read something, close your book, think about it, visualize it, and then try to memorize it. If you forget something that you've read, so let's say you're like, okay, there's displacement, something about a point and its distance from its equilibrium point in a wave and it's denoted by some letter okay i need to go revise that so that's what you do you just go through the book and you test yourself on what you're learning literally as you're learning it for the first time right the entire point of using active recall is to throw out passive learning methods such as reading or note taking and rather grappling with the information and visualizing it because that is how your brain <laughs> remembers things. This means no more reading the text, reading it again, maybe making some notes. Studies have shown that that is just not very efficient and you probably won't remember most of what you read and then write down. The method is scientifically proven to be essentially useless when it comes to remembering what you learn. And if the point of learning is to remember what you learn, then why not start doing that from the moment that you're presented with new information. In a study done by a dude called Jeffrey D. Karpik, students were put into four groups. These four groups were then presented with material that they needed to try and memorize. The first group was told to just read the material once. The second group was told to read it a few times. The third group was told to draw a mind map of the information. And the fourth group was told to implement and use active recall as they were learning the new information. A whole week later, the students were brought back and tested on what they had learned the week prior to the testing. All four groups were given short form verbatim questions and these were the results. For the first group who only read the material once, they didn't do so well, right? They only remembered about 30% of what they had learned the previous week. The second group who spent like a little bit more time trying to learn the new information, they did a bit better. They remembered about 50% of what they had learned. Interestingly enough, those who drew diagrams, that didn't really do much for them and they only remembered about 40% of what they had learned. But most importantly, the students who practice active recall, they remembered roughly 70% of the information that they had been presented with. And it wasn't just in the short form questions that these active recall students did better. They also outperformed the other groups in more practical inference based questions, meaning they didn't just do better at remembering the material that they had learned they were also better at applying the material that they had learned. This was the study that really convinced me personally that active recall just is objectively better when it comes to learning. And I hope that I've managed to convince you at least a little bit as well. Okay, but then where do you go from here, right? Do you need to completely revamp all of the ways that you've learned to study the material that you're given for school? Um, how would you even go about doing that? What new things should you implement? Well. I've got some suggestions for you. Now, if note taking is something that you hold very dear to your heart and you don't want to let go of, and I get that, I am an avid note taker, I love taking notes, it just makes me feel productive. Well, I have a suggestion for you. Instead of taking notes, when you're reading material for the first time, in tandem with just actively recording the information that you're reading, as I gave an example of earlier in the video, you also want to write down questions for yourself as you're learning the new material and just write all of it down on a piece of paper. This way, later on in your studying, when you're doing revision again, you can use your sheet of questions and you can test yourself on the information that you had learned without making loads and loads of notes that you'll probably never look at again. Another option for those of us who enjoy having neat pretty little notes that make us feel a bit more secure about not accidentally missing something in the syllabus. Again in tandem with the closed book remembering as you're learning new material. After you've read a whole section of text so let's say after you've read like a paragraph or maybe you've covered all the information that there 
is on a given topic is to close your textbook take out a piece of paper and just write down everything that you can remember of what they said it might be useful to do this in kind of a mind map format because you'll probably remember like snippets of information rather than long sentences which just better lends itself to a more mind map type of format but write everything you remember down and once you've exhausted that go back open your textbook and just fill in all the details that you might have forgotten this way you are very effectively practicing active recall but you also have something physical and tangible to show for it i would even suggest using both the question writing and the mind mapping techniques at the same time. This way you have a sheet of questions that you can ask yourself later on and it will be useful for the future, but you also kind of have your database of mind maps that you'll probably never look at again. But you have it and you can make it look pretty and if that's something that you like, be my guest, I get you, I'm the same. <laughs> well, that's that on Active Recall. Hopefully I've convinced you that Active Recall is a very efficient and probably the most efficient studying technique that you could be using right now. And I really hope that you can find the suggestions that I made useful and find ways to implement them into your own studying. Remember, I'm not suggesting you just throw out everything you've done for the past few years and the kind of habits that you've gotten into when it comes to your studying up to now. But active recall just outperforms all the other studying techniques and it would be very wise of you to just start implementing it into your studying, even if it's just bit by bit. If you like this video, this is pretty much what the channel is all about. I do videos on studying techniques, learning methods, learning styles and just schooling in general. So if you enjoyed this video, why not stick around? Please subscribe, it's free. You can always unsubscribe later. I would greatly appreciate you subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Also, if you like this video, give it a like. That way I know that you like the video. Seems pretty straightforward to me. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you took the time to do that. Also, if you have anything to say, if you want to swear at me incessantly about how stupid I am and how please put it in the comments if you have suggestions. If you just want to have a chat, I'm here to talk to you. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one and good luck on your studying journey.